Hi everyone, welcome to chapter 2 of CHM256 entitled Evaluation of Experimental Data. Let's continue with part D. In this video, we will focus on Q-test and confidence limit. Q-test is a simple statistical test to determine if a data value that appears to be very different from the rest of the data in a set known as an outlier may be retained or rejected. Outlier rise due to the results of error. Here are the steps involved to apply Q-test. First, arrange the data in an increasing order or you can also arrange it in, in decreasing order. Number two, determine Q of the experiment by using the formula of A divided by W. A is the gap between the outlier and the closest number to it, while W is the range. You have to calculate the difference between the suspected value or the outlier and its nearest neighbor to find A. You have to calculate the range, which is the difference between highest and lowest value to find W. Q of the experiment is then compared to the Q table. Uh, this can be obtained from the given table, where the Q table is the reference value corresponding to the sample size and the confidence limit. If the value of the Q experiment is higher than the Q table, the questionable results or the outlier has to be rejected. If Q experiment is lower than Q table, the data has to be retained and the data is not an outlier. This is the table that shows the critical values for the rejection quotient Q. To look at the value, look at the number of observation, how many trials and data you have, look at the percentage of confidence, and then find the value of the Q from the table. Let's have a look at this example. Trial 4 appears to be incorrect. Check using Q-test at 90% confidence whether trial 4 should be rejected or accepted. Now, you are given a set of data. So for the solution, first, you have to arrange the data in an increasing order or decreasing order. Next, you have to find the gap between the data. From here, you will see that the gap between the outlier and the nearest neighbor to it here is 0 0.31. Then, you have to calculate to find W. Now, you have the value of Q experiment. Now, you have to look at the value of Q at 90% confidence, number of observation 7, since you have 7 data. After that, you have to compare the Q value from the experiment obtained with the Q table. And finally, you have to make the conclusion whether the outlier should be rejected or accepted. Please remember, if Q experiment is larger than the Q table, the outlier should be rejected and vice versa. Please pause the video and try out this question. Now, Let's check the answer.
please note that you have to consider the result of Q test. If the outlier has to be rejected, you should exclude the outlier in your subsequent calculation. In contrast, if the outlier has to be retained, you should include the outlier in your next calculation. The true value of mean mu for a population can never be determined exactly because such determination requires the infinite number of measurements to be made. Therefore, limits are set in which experimentally determined mean or sample mean can be found. So, the range estimated value of population mean is called confidence interval and the limit of this range is called confidence limit. Confidence interval can be calculated by this equation. Where S is the standard deviation, N is the number of sample and T is the statistical factor, this value can be obtained from the reference table. These are the steps to determine confidence limit. Number one, calculate experimental mean. Number two, calculate standard deviation. Number three, check T factor from the reference table for value at 90% or 95% or 99% confidence, depending on the question, and the degree of freedom. Use the confidence interval formula to calculate the limit. And lastly, write the conclusion. This is the table used to check T factor at different confidence value and degree of freedom. Let's take a look at this example. Now you have to calculate the 90% and 95% confidence intervals for the given data. These are the steps that you need to consider. Let's do this together. For 90% confidence limit, firstly, you have to find the mean and standard deviation value. Then, look up the T value from the table for 90% of confidence limit and substitute all the values into the equation and you should get this answer. Finally, you have to make the conclusion as follows. There is 90% chance the true mean lies within range from 4.9954 to 5.0018. This is how you can find T value from the table. It was found that the value of T here is 2.132 when you look up the value at 90% confidence level degree of freedom value is 4 because you have 5 data and the number of data has to be reduced by 1 to get the degree of freedom 4. Same goes with 95% confidence limit. You should get the answer like this. You should apply the same procedure as shown previously. And this is how to look up the value of T at 95% confidence level. And you will get 2.776. Please pause the video 
and try out the question. Here is the answer of the question. And this is how you can find the value from the table. That's the end of the chapter. I hope you will be able to understand the lesson successfully. Please do some revision and try out the tutorial question given by your lecturer for better understanding. Good luck!